Hey folks, this is Laszlo Doe, inviting you into my godless kitchen. And today I'm going to show you my way of making sushi. And just to keep with the theme of the channel, I guess I'll call this Skeptic's Sushi. These are the ingredients that I'll be using. Many of these are just what I personally prefer. I'll let you know when we get to the part where you can change things up to suit your own tastes. The first thing you need to do is make your rice. If you ever run into somebody who says you need to buy special expensive sushi rice in order to make your sushi, point your finger in anger and scream, you lie. Contrary to what many people say, you can get the stickiness needed to make sushi from regular long grain rice. You just need to add extra water. Most rice uh, that you buy will tell you to add two cups of water for one cup of rice, but I'm going to add three cups of water. Cook the rice as normal, bringing it to a boil, and then cook over low heat until the water is absorbed. Do not add any salt or margarine because that will ruin the stickiness. When all the water is absorbed by the rice, turn the heat off and add about one and a half tablespoons of vinegar. This is one of the only times for any recipe that I actually measure an ingredient like this because too much vinegar can ruin the taste of the rice in my opinion. After you've mixed in the vinegar, cover the rice and let it cool uh, to room temperature. This can take a few hours, so you might want to place it in the refrigerator to cut down on the time. Either way, we can make use of some of that time to do some other preparation work. For this recipe, I'm using some canned chunk-like tuna. Drain out the water and place the meat in a bowl. Once you've done that, add about one to one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce and stir to make sure the tuna is coated. Once you've finished this, uh, you'll want to place the whole thing in the microwave and nuke it for about 30 seconds. After that, just leave it set out to cool. You're also going to want to cook a scrambled egg. Uh, you can either do it in a pan or in the microwave. Uh, just nuke it for about a minute. It really doesn't matter. And when it's done, put it in the refrigerator to cool. Next, you want to cut your vegetables. Take a sheet of the seaweed and use it as a guide to make sure you cut the vegetables to the correct length. Once that's done, you're going to make a series of cuts down the length of the vegetable. In this case, I just so happen to be cutting a carrot, but you would do the same thing for any number of different vegetables that you might choose for your sushi. Here you can see some cucumber and carrots that I have finished cutting uh, in preparation for making the sushi. And you'll also see that there is the scrambled egg there that we made earlier. Uh, I cut that into strips as much as possible as well. Finally, we're ready to start building sushi. You're going to need a sushi mat like the one I'm using. They're only a few dollars, and they're available at grocery stores and retail stores. They're not hard to find at all. What you want to do is put a sheet of the seaweed down and start making a bed of rice like I've started doing here. You want the rice to be no more than about a quarter inch thick, and you need to make sure the rice is spread over the entire sheet except for one edge. And here is a photo of the completed bed of rice. As you can see, the entire sheet of seaweed is covered except for that top strip. Uh, that little bit needs to remain clear because we're going to end up rolling this whole thing up. And that is the area that is going to create a seal and kind of hold the thing together. 
And next comes all the other fillings. This is where you can be creative and try all kinds of combinations of seafood and vegetables. The combination that I'm making includes the tuna and soy sauce mixture that I showed you earlier. Uh, it also has carrots, cucumber, scrambled egg, and horseradish. Uh, shrimp is always a good choice in this kind of thing. Uh, a lot of people like tofu to make it vegetarian. Uh, you can even go the raw fish route if you know what to look for. So there's all kinds of different things you can try. And here's just an overhead view to give you a better idea of how I place the ingredients on top of the rice. Alright, and here comes the fun part, rolling the whole thing up. Uh, you want to roll it as tight as possible, but you want to be careful that you don't uh, wrap it so tight that you end up squeezing the fillings right out of the seaweed. So, you can see how that uh, sushi mat comes in handy here. It'd be kind of difficult to do this without it. Alright, there's not too much left to do. Uh, one of the last things we need to do is cut the roll into pieces. I typically cut one roll into eight different pieces and then after they are cut they're going to go onto a plate. And once I get several of these onto a plate, I will show you a picture of the final product. Okay, folks, the amount of sushi on this plate is equivalent to two of the rolls that I just showed you how to make. Uh, given the quantity of ingredients in the recipe, you should be able to make three. So that's it, and I gotta say, it looks pretty good, and I'm getting kinda hungry.